Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know I said I might be closing up the series about the Inspiron 15 7000 soon, but then I sat down today and made a little list of video requests and thoughts I had about what other videos I could potentially make about the computer, and that list actually became quite extensive. So while I thought I might be closing the series, I actually might have maybe up to even five more videos that I'm gonna put out about this computer. If you're new around here, I'm W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspirational stuff. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to the channel, that would help a lot. For this video, I got a lot of requests from people that wanted me to try to limit the power that gets pushed to the turbo instead of turning turbo off and also in general trying XTU, which is Intel's application for undervolting, instead of just using throttle stop for undervolting the CPU. Also there was a lot of requests to monitor the fan noise and to use a decibel meter, maybe a phone application decibel meter, so I will include that in this video as well. There will be five different benchmarks covered in the video. One with no settings applied, one with only undervolt settings applied, one where I apply both the undervolt and a turbo limit of 23 watts, one where I apply the same undervolt but a turbo limit of 25 watts, and then the last where I turn off turbo just to do the comparison of figures that I did beforehand. All right, we are now in Intel XTU. And XTU definitely has a few things going for it that uh, throttle stop lacks. For example, it's got some really good stress test and benchmarking. But the main thing I would say is that all the values are saved you don't have to start the application up to apply the settings to the processor. The CPU will run at the settings that you select until you change them in the app. All these tests are performed with the new BIOS and uh, the last video I made was with the old BIOS. So that could change some things but that's not something that I could avoid. We just have to run it like that. Last but not least, I will be using the monitoring that is already in XTU. I was looking at this a bit today and I really enjoyed the monitoring, both these curves that you can get here and also here where you can see whether it's thermal throttling or power limit throttling and you see the temperatures and utilization very clearly. While I was screencasting the whole thing and I love making long videos, which you should know by now, Still, I don't think I will show you all of those screencasts, mainly because when I run the screencasting software, the power that gets consumed by Cinebench, I mean, how much Cinebench can take from the power of the CPU, gets limited a bit, because some of the CPU power has to go to that screencasting software. For that reason, I will not be running screencasts of the benchmarks. Instead, I will just show you a print screen of the temperatures, and the scores that I received from Cinebench. The first test I did was with no settings applied whatsoever. So there's no undervolt and there's no turbo limit in this test. The thing that happens there is that since the new BIOS was released, we're actually a bit better on temperatures than what we used to before that BIOS. So when we, before the BIOS released, were always at 99 degrees or 100 degrees. After BIOS release, we are at 97 degrees approximately most of the time. We are constantly thermal throttling, which is limiting the performance quite a bit. So the Cinebench R20 score was 1358 with these settings. In the second benchmark, I turn on the undervolt settings which in this case means that I have applied a 140 millivolt undervolt to the CPU core and the CPU cache and a 40 millivolt undervolt to the CPU graphics. So let's have a look at how to undervolt like that. You'd go to core voltage offset, which is right here. 
to drag that slider down to the minus 140 millivolts if that's what you want. As you can see here, it immediately applies the same undervolt to the catch voltage offset, which is really nice. In throttle stop, you have to do that yourself. Then we move down to the graphics and we have the processor graphics, the voltage offset there. We're going to set it to minus 40. Then we apply the settings and now we're going to try the benchmark in Cinebench R20 again. With these settings applied, the temperatures were lowering, but only ever so slightly. Instead of 97 degrees average, we were around 95, 96 degrees average. Cinebench R20 turned out at 1583 points. Before I performed this third and fourth test, I was playing around with the different turbo settings for a few hours during the day. You can keep Turbo Boost short power max to the default 90 watt, but the Turbo Boost power max, you need to take this one down quite significantly. I was able to take it down to 23 watt to then be able to stay around 90 degrees. So we're gonna apply these changes and now we're gonna rerun the Cinebench R20 and we're gonna see how the temperature is during this test. With those settings and then the same undervolt settings as before, Cinebench ran at 1460 points and the temperatures were around 85 to 87 degrees during the whole test. So that's a whole lot better than what we used to be at with both the undervolt before and with the out of the box settings. But the best thing is that the performance is almost the same as out of the box. So we're not limiting performance at all. However, when we run these settings, we have about the same fan noise as we had with the out of the box settings. So we are running the fans. It's not terribly loud or high pitched or anything, but the fans are definitely running. You should know that they are running, which they should because they help to cool the processor. So it's, it's obvious that the fans are running. In the fourth test, I just adjusted the wattage that went to the turbo slightly up from 23 to 25 watts. And this made the temperature change quite a bit. So instead of being between 85 and 87, instead we are now between 87 and 91. It's still an okay temperature range for this kind of processor. So we're fine, we're in the safe zone. It's also helping the performance a little bit more and Cinebench landed at 1542 points with these settings. Last but not least, for reference, I wanted to try what is the performance and what is the temperature when you turn turbo off completely, which is the mode that I have recommended before and the mode that I have been running most of the time before. I find that it really works well when it comes to gaming and graphics intense work. But when it comes to processor heavy tasks, like for example, exporting a large video or working with really big Excel sheets, it's not the best settings because it's actually limiting the performance quite a bit compared to what you actually could achieve with the computer. With the turbo turned off using throttle stop, I achieved 1187 points in Cinebench R20. So that's a big, big step down compared to the settings that I was using before. The big thing though was that temperatures were same as before around 70 degrees. So it's way lower temperatures. And what that means is that the fans don't need to run very much. So with the settings, with turbo turned off completely, we were around these levels in the decibel meter. And that's almost like silence. So if you really care about your computer being very silent when you're running even a little bit heavier tasks, I think still that turning off turbo is the way to go for you. A big shout out to the people that have provided me with questions and input to make this video possible. For example, White Rhino, 
that put a very nice comment on the Undervolt video that I made beforehand. I hope this video was helpful to you. For me, this computer just gets better and better uh, along the way when I keep tweaking and uh, fixing different things. And there are still a few more things that I'm going to be sharing with you. So stay tuned to the channel to get those tips and tricks soon. Have a very nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.